A friend of mine asked me if I could do anything to increase the range and battery life of this interesting radio. I told him, sure, I'll take a look at it. So let's get into the intro and I'll show you what I came up with. Hi, this is Bill the Techno Gypsy. In this video, I'm going to show you the upgrades I came up with to increase the range and battery life of this radio. This radio is a Wave Relay MPU5 smart radio manufactured by Persistent Systems. It really is a completely different kind of radio than I've played with before. I'm not asking any questions as to what it's used for, just meeting the challenge presented by a friend. The MPU5 is called a smart radio by its manufacturer. It is in a class of radios referred to as a mobile ad hoc networking or manet radios. The radio has an onboard Android operating system that allows you to install and run apps natively. You can connect various USB devices, video, IP networking, and other types of devices to this radio. The radio uses mesh networking technology to allow them to be integrated into a network. The mesh networking architecture allows the network to be scaled easily with no hop limits. These radios have the ability to change operating frequency through the use of interchangeable frequency modules. The three antennas provide MIMO technology to the radio, thereby increasing its communication range. How about a radio that can stream H.264 HD video by connecting a camera directly to the radio? You can also connect multiple HDMI compliant displays to the video output of the radio. This radio also allows you to implement radio over IP or ROIP tethering directly to the radio using this attachment. This attachment goes onto this plate our connector over here on this side, you just align it, screw it down, and now you have an Ethernet connect that you can use to connect to your network or any other type of IP-based Ethernet system. This radio uses digital voice. Think of ICOM's D-Star and supports integrated hardware cryptographic acceleration. Each radio can be cryptographically authenticated and it supports over-the-air rekeying and key zero capability. It can monitor up to 16 channels of voice and allows interconnection of the Wave Relay Mesh Network to your existing LAN mobile radio or LMR system. So, what improvements did I come up with to enhance this super radio? I narrowed my thinking to the first two obvious things, antennas and power. Let's head out to the lab and take a look at the solar-powered system I came up with to power this radio. I hope you enjoyed the short premiere video I did of the solar power control unit here. Keep in mind that this is the basic model of six other models that we have that become very sophisticated. This is only a 100 amp hour model. We go up to a 400 amp hour model also. This provides a 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery supply to the wave relay radios. It has a Renogy 40 amp MPPT solar charge controller. The next two leads go over to the battery itself and that'll provide the solar charging to the battery and allows the battery itself to power up through the solar charge controller and then supports a load unit over here that provides a full fused contacts for multiple amperages that you need at 13.8 volts. It's a fairly simple design, but it supports and drives and powers the wave relay radios without a problem. And even without the solar panel for the recharge, with a 100 amp hour battery pack, it will last for days in the field in full operation.
Let's head outside and we'll take a look at the completed system and some of the specifics on the antenna mounts and how that whole array structure was put together. I wanted to give you a full view of what the completed system looks like. This is our antenna stand and mount system. This is our solar charge controller that I went over earlier in the lab. And this is our mounting system to hold our two solar panels. This is actually a deer stand that we modified. There used to be a chair that's set up there that's been removed. It's 14 feet off the ground to where the chair would be. We have a four foot piece of tubing on top of it. So we have the antennas at an elevation of 18 feet. We have the three antennas spaced out with lightning arresters. And then we have the antennas screwed into the lightning arresters up top. Down here we have our wave relay radio. It's connected into the three antennas. Comes back over, the wave relay also has a DC power system that connects into the solar charging controller system. Over here, this is just our standard two solar panel mount system that we have for field deploy. So now that we've looked at the overall system, we're gonna start going over each one of the components in more detail. This is the Blue Sky three arm array that we're using to hold our three antennas up here on the top of our two inch pipe. This is a very nice unit. We're gonna go over it in detail and I'm gonna show you how we put this thing together, how all of it comes apart, and then we'll get into the antennas themselves. So let's get started on looking how we put this thing together. The primary component on the three element arm is this three-way pole mount from Blue Sky Systems. This is a very, very fascinating device. It's very simple. You put it at the point where you want it on the pole. You close both sides. We tighten it down. And there's your three arm pole mount. Now that we have the three way pole mount attached to the end of the two inch pipe, we're gonna take our three foot arms And these just slide right on. We take the pin. pin it in and we have a solid mount on a three foot arm. You can get these arms in one foot, two foot, and three foot lengths. Now that we have the arm attached to the three-way pole mount, we need to put an antenna onto this arm. That's where these GPS mount plates come into play. These are also made by Blue Sky. They're very simple. We remove the pin, you put it in, connect it, and now you have an antenna mount point. So, we now use a polyphaser lightning arrester that we take and put into the mount, and all we do is screw this onto the back, tighten the nut, and we have a completed 
lightning arrested antenna mount. Now, this makes it very easy to change the antennas that you're using with the wave relay radios based off of the frequency module that's on the radio. Right now, it's an, an S band, so we're at 2.2 to about 2.5 gig. We have the appropriate sized antennas on it. If you change to another module, all you do is change the antenna up here. You still have a lightning arrestor. It's grounded into the metal part of the rest of the stand. And you've got your lightning protection. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If so, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Or thumbs down if you didn't like the video. This is Bill, the Techno Gypsy, saying 7-3 and God bless.